everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and I make soap and handmade items for the body. Um, today I'm just going to kind of go through some additives that you could add into soap or into homemade products. So um, first let me explain my fingernails. You might notice that they look discolored. That is from hair color. I did my sister's hair and the gloves that she had, for some reason, the color soaked through the gloves onto my nails, but not onto my skin. So my nails absorbed the color. But anyways, so that's why they look kind of crusty. Um, and yeah, let's get to it. So I have a few different, um, by few I mean a lot. Let me start with botanicals. Let's just jump right into botanicals. These aren't all the botanicals you can have, but they are just a handful of botanicals that you can use. I'm just grabbing them. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start with um, Marigold, which this is Calendula. Let me see. Can I move this light down? Trying to make my lights a little better for you. So there it is. And these you can put on the top as a decoration or you can steep them in some oil um, and, you know, make them um, like an infused oil. Like here's an example here. Make sure this is shut. So this has some calendula and some other herbs and stuff that I've been, they've been in here for a few months. But anyways, so you could do that with them. And there you go. I'm not going to really go into depth about like everything you could do with them because I have a lot to show you. And then here are some ultra blue lavender buds. And... That is what they look like. Some more calendula petals, just from a different company. Um, I have pink rose petals. Now these are more of like a pinky purple, instead of like the red. And then I have here rose buds. The petals are more of like the shredded petal look, and then the buds are whole buds. Jasmine flowers, chamomile, and I'm sure I have more somewhere, but I'm not going to grab them. And then I have um, other things that I guess could still be considered like on the botanical slash herb type of um, category. And that is, let's see here, some tea. You could add tea to soap. You could brew it and make soap with the brewed tea. Or you can throw the loose tea into the soap, which it would make it really abrasive and scratchy. So I suggest not to do it unless you're making like a foot soap. Um, definitely I wouldn't use it like on the face or sensitive parts of the body. But... This you could also infuse into oil if you would want to do it that way. So this is um, South African rooibos tea. And what this does is it's just it's so great for the skin. I like to brew the tea and then um, do a water discount in my soap and then add the tea to the soap. And it just makes a really pretty color. It's really gorgeous. Somebody just drove by my house just now as I'm filming. And... He like looked over in my window because I'm filming like at one of my front windows and my curtains are open and then I have my lights all on. So when they drive by, they could see like straight in and he was just, he like glanced over and then he looked away and then he glanced back and like made this face like, what in the world is she doing? Because I'm just sitting here talking to myself with a bunch of lights on me. So I probably look like I'm having like some sort of a play or something in my house. And they're the audience driving by. But anyways, 
So, yeah. So you could get the packets of tea, which is what I have here. I got these from Amazon, and they're individually packaged in here. And then you can get loose tea, like if you don't want to waste packets, you can buy the loose tea. Now this container is a little dusty, dust. that's not dusty, it has um, the powder on it. But this is rooibos tea. And it even tells you um, to use a heaping teaspoon per eight ounces of water. And then you boil it, steep for six to seven minutes, and there you go. So I actually um, make mine extra strong, and that is what it looks like. It smells good. Let's put a light in there for you. There you go. So yeah, smells really good. And it's just a red tea. But I like to use it in my soap that I make for my dad because he has eczema and stuff. So that's really good for that. All right. Next, um, I'm going to show you um, some cocoa powder. And this is the raw cocoa powder. Well, how would you pronounce that? Is it the same as cocoa or is it pronounced differently? Let me know in the comments down below and correct me. Um, but it says that it contains antioxidants, energy, and magnesium. And this is organic raw nutrition. And this is a very, very light powder compared to, you can actually see it right here in the package. Very light compared to this one here, which has cocoa powder all over it but I got this from Aldi and it's baking cocoa and it's unsweetened and it's a bit darker than the organic one but it's it's a good colorant like a natural colorant and it leaves a mess which is why all my containers are messy let's wipe that up I don't have my paper towels handy oh yes I do I lied oh well I'm using my disinfectant wipes to get all that up. Baba, calm down. That's my dog. His name is Tiberius, after James Tiberius Kirk from Star Trek. My, my husband is a Trekkie. And he's looking out the window, and I think he sees the neighbor's dog. Hey, Baba. Ty. What are you doing? All right. And he's a Rottweiler. So, <laughs> so anyways. So, I have here... Um, all natural turmeric powder um, and this is an excellent colorant that makes like a yellowy orange color depending on how much you put in and yeah that's why I got it you can add it to face scrubs or anything too I like to just use it as a soap colorant and it's a nice beautiful color it's a nice alternative to micas because there's a lot of controversy around micas so, you know, use what you want and do your own research. So here is a big bag of activated charcoal. I got this from Amazon, and this is food grade um, activated charcoal. So, yeah, this is one pound, and it's a huge bag, and it'll last me forever. And it was like $10 maybe. But anyways, let me move all of my stuff over and I'm gonna pull up some other additives that you can use some of them you could just use in body products my dog is laying on the floor right where I need to walk and I'm trying to move him but he's not budging so I guess I'll just reach around so here is I got it from Walmart in the clearance section it was $17.48 for this bag but they marked it down to $4.50 so I got two bags which are gonna last me forever as long as they don't expire before I could use them and this one actually will expire in a few months. So if I want to um, put this in any kind of oils or anything, I need to do it soon and then use it up. But anyway, this is, I believe it's pronounced a key berry powder. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. Let me know. Um, but this just turns brown in soap. So if you're going to use it in soap as a colorant, just know that it's just going to be brown. 
So you could find other things to make with this. Um, just do some research, look it up, see what you can make with it, and go from there. Um, I got mine pretty inexpensive, so I figured, hey, it was worth a you know worth the purchase just to test out and experiment. Then this here is moringa leaf powder, and I got this I believe from. Gabriel Brothers, well it's Gabe's now, but Gabe's, and it's seven ounce bag, and it creates a really pretty green color in the soap, and um, you could use more or less depending on how um, pigmented you want your soap to be, but that's it's just a very green powder. It doesn't leave too much of a texture or anything in the soap. Can you see? Yeah, you guys can see. It's just a very pretty, let me see, can get you under my lights. It's hard. There you go. It's very green. So I've actually used this quite a few times. I use this in my face scrub that I make. And it makes it a beautiful minty green color in the face scrub. And then I have some ground paprika. And I just got this from the um, spice section at the grocery store. This will make a slight color to this soap, more of like an orange. Um, but I don't use it too often. I got it um, pretty inexpensive just to try. And it has pretty big grains to it, so it would make it an exfoliating bar if you add it to soap. Just know that. It's not as finely ground. <sighs> then we have cinnamon powder, and you can use this um, as uh, a colorant in soap. It's just going to make it more of a brownish color. So um, just know that if people have a sensitivity to cinnamon, they might not like this. Um, I don't. I'm. You know, I added this to my cinnamon roll soap. And I made an, a mica line or a pencil line in my soap with it. And it actually turned out really nice. It didn't break apart. But yeah, I used the cinnamon in it because it was a cinnamon soap. So that's why I used that. And then this is orange peels. These are bigger granules of orange peels. And you could use these in the soap as a really, really harsh exfoliant for like the feet. Or you could use it on the top for decoration. Um, and you can also infuse these into oil, which I've done before. And poppy seeds. I got these ones from Walmart. You could just use these. Um, you could use them in the soap as an exfoliant, and you could actually use them on top of the soap. Same as the pretty much everything else. This came in a different um, thing, so I ripped part of the label off and stuck it on here so I knew what it was. This is apricot seed powder. They're bigger granules than um, a, a finely milled powder. Um, so, yeah. I use these um, sometimes if I want some, some exfoliation and speculage in the soap. Once again, this is um, a little bit of a rougher texture. So I would not use it on the face. I would keep it strictly to more of the feet. But it does add a nice little speckle to the soap. Then, let me get out all of my powders and everything like that. I have a lot of fruit powders that I got on sale um, from Wholesale Supplies Plus. So I have here marshmallow root powder. I add um, a little bit of this to my leave-in conditioner that I make and it's really good for that. I haven't made um, anything else with it, so I'm actually gonna do some research um, and see what all I can make with marshmallow root powder. If you have any ideas, leave them down below. Let me know. Um, what do you use the marshmallow root powder for? I'm really interested to know and to experiment myself with it. Walnut shell powder. I have a couple of these and they're both opened because I lost the one I couldn't find it and I found it after I already opened the second one so I have here two but I put this it's very very fine very small granules um, more of a powder and I use this in 
in my soaps and I use it in my face scrub. So it's a really, really nice gentle exfoliant for the face. I wouldn't use too much of it because anything that has kind of a scratchy texture could actually damage the skin. So yeah, walnut shell powder and it makes the beautiful speckles in the soap. Then I have raspberry powder and um, this will turn soap brown if you use it as a colorant. So it's not ideal as a colorant. You can, I'm pretty sure you could steep this in some oil and infuse it. I could be wrong. Like I said, let me know. Give me some ideas on what I could do with all of these additives because I have a lot. Um, but there's raspberry powder. And I actually used this um, in a face mask that I made. It was a um, all powdered milk and this and colloidal oatmeal. And I left it in the powder form and put it in a jar. And then what you do is you take like a half a teaspoon of it, put it on your hands, add a little bit of water, mix it around, turn it into like um, kind of like a clay texture. And then you rub it on your face and let it sit when it starts to dry. You just get a warm cloth and just wipe your face and yeah, there that is. Orange powder. You could also infuse this with oils if you wanted to. Carrot powder. This is really nice if you want to do carrots in a recipe, but you don't want to use fresh carrots. So it's really easy and quick to add to the soap and it takes all the crazy work out of it. I haven't used this yet, as you can see, um, but I really want to, so one day I'll figure out something to do with that. Lavender powder, I've added this to soap. It gave it such a gentle, gentle exfoliation, barely anything. It was really, really nice, um, but you can also infuse this with oil if you wanted to do that and then strain it out, use it in some soap. Um, if you just wanted to have some unscented lavender soap, this would be really awesome. Pumpkin powder, I have yet to use this, but this is a great alternative to pumpkin puree or baby food, pumpkin baby food. Um, you could use this in like a themed soap, like many people um, are part of like the soaping collaborations and say we have to have pumpkin and it could either be powder or puree this is a good good alternative i did use puree in my last pumpkin soap but next pumpkin soap i make i'm going to be using the powder lemon granules a lot like the orange peel granules um pretty much you could do all the same things with this that you can with the orange peels Banana powder. You could add this to um, like a face mask or something like that. I would look up um, if you need like preservatives for it. You could add it to um, soap if you would like. It's not going to make the soap, uh, I mean, it's not like titanium dioxide where it's going to make the soap lighter. So just know that it could discolor your soap. But if you wanted to have you know, a banana soap with banana powder in it, you can. And lemon powder, same as all the other powders. You could do the same things with it. And then you have your jojoba beads. Now I have more, I don't know where they are, but um, these are very, very small, circular, round um, jojoba beads with pigment to them. So you can add these to a face scrub, a body scrub, sugar scrub. You can add it to a bar of soap. It would add really, really um, like a slight exfoliation in your bar of soap. And the colors tend to stay in. So if you make like a white soap, then when you cut it, you could very well see these colors in there. So that's really cool. And it just adds extra little fun to it. Um, you could use this as an alternative to soap shreds, like if you want to do confetti soap. Um, so, yeah, you can use the jojoba beads. Now, I'm just double checking to make sure I didn't 
forget any of my additives. I do have um, bath tea that I have also steeped in oil before and used in my soap. Um, I have colloidal oatmeal. I have coconut flour. Um, I have magnesium um, for my deodorants. I have whole oats, whole oatmeal. Um, obviously, titanium dioxide is a, um, a colorant additive. Um, I know I have more uh, arrowroot powder I have. I have different clays. So all of these things can either be added to soap or, and I also have like salt and stuff, different salts. Actually, let me grab my salts and I will show you a couple options for salts. Let's see here. Yeah. And sugar. You could add sugar to your soap if you wanted to. All right. So here is um, a uh, colored salt that you can use to put on top of your soap as a decoration. Or if you wanted a finer milled salt like this, you could actually put this like in a salt bar or a scrub. So you have options. This is the Himalayan salt. And this here is says Savvy Salt soap topper, red velvet, dead sea salt, and mica. And this is from Soapbox Micas, which is now closed down, but it is another company now. I do not know if she has these, so I'm not going to tell you to go get them from there, because I don't know if they're there or not. So, anyways, yeah. So, here's a couple, you know, salt options to top your soap or to put in your soap for a salt bar. Um, I think that might be it for a lot of my additives. Like I said, I have the other additives um, like the colloidal oatmeal and all of that and I'm just not going to get into that right now because uh, it's pretty much the same as all of this other stuff. Um, but anyways, if you want to see more videos like this where I just kind of show you different additives you can get to use in skincare products or soap, um, just let me know. Um, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to have um, all different types of videos that I'm going to be doing, not just soap making because um, I'm not like a busy business and uh, I do very small batches and I sometimes it'll take me a while to sell out of something so I don't make soap every day or some I used to make it like once a week but I don't anymore because I ran out of room in on my drying racks so I'm making a lot of other body products too like face scrubs face oils lip oils lip balms stuff like that um, leave-in conditioner so if you're interested in seeing things like that I also have videos um, you could just check out the rest of my channel and see what the kind of variety that I have. I'm thinking about starting a second channel. I'm not sure yet. I'm just going to have to feel it out and see how things go the next couple of months with YouTube. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to do a video on different types of oils that you could use in your soaps, different essential oils, and fragrance oils. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just make that video here right after I film this one and I'll make it a separate video for you so thank you guys so much for watching sorry I've been talking so much but uh, I just realized this whole time this lights been turned off um, yep it's unplugged <laughs> no wonder there's no light alright guys thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye